Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. We have an amazing story to tell today. My guests are Olivia Christ, who is one of the directors and one of the executive producers, and Bly Faust, one of the executive producers of a very important and gut-wrenching new docu-series, Shiny Happy People, Duggar Family Secrets, which premieres on Prime Video on June 2nd. To say this is appointment television would be an understatement. The four-part series takes a deep, deep dive into the Duggar family roots in Christian fundamentalism and the crimes and misdeed they fermented, as well as their blind commitment to Bill Goddard, the founder of the ultra, underline ultra, conservative Christian organization, the Institute in Basic Life Principles, or IBLP for short. Most strikingly, the series shines a very bright light on the overwhelming power that media has to shape politics, culture, and family life in America. So, after that giant, long introduction, please welcome Olivia Christ and Bly Faust. Hi, Hi, great thanks for having us. having us. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a intro. thank you. That is a significant intro. Okay, first I just got to get it right out. I am lucky enough to have had a screener, and I watched all four episodes back to back, to back to back. I mean, wow! And we're gonna get into some of the deeper things that you don't expect in the docu series. But why were the Duggars so interesting to you? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, the Duggars are really a vehicle for, uh, you know, the larger story, really, for the jumping off of this larger story, which is, you know, this this insidious organization, IBLP, founded by Bill Gothard. Um, but in terms of the Duggars, I think, you know, for a lot of the viewers, it was just fascinating, you know, how can one woman, one woman have so many children and, you um, you know, keep it all together. So I think, you know, for on the viewer side, um, that definitely was was fascinating for people. Yeah, I mean, they're like, they're the shined up big, you know, family that's on the cover of every People magazine. And you know who, you know, even if you never watched the show, you know who they are. So I think for us, it was, it was incredible that there was so much more to this story. And they just, but, you know, you know them, like the audience, I mean, people know them. And so they're the great entry point to telling like the larger story because there is that initial interest in the family. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did you know what you were getting into when you started the documentary that it's really about this extreme, extreme fundamentalist cult-like group that the Duggars happened to be a part of? Or did were you interested in the Duggars and that led you to the bigger story? I think for, you know, Throughout our research process, you know, looking at the Duggar family and then starting to notice articles pop up online that link the Duggars to um, the Institute in Basic Life Principles and then going down the rabbit hole of research into the IBLP and then just being absolutely, you know, mind blown. Yeah, because it really the Duggars are just a gateway in. Um, How did you get Jill Duggar now, Jill Dillard, who was, and we'll get into all this, one of her brother Josh's victims to even sitting down about this because she's so clearly still so haunted and in such pain. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously, this was not an easy decision for her, as people will see in the series. I mean, she she comes out and explicitly says that. And I think that giving, she entrusted us with the opportunity to really come forward and speak her truth and to get it all out. And I think, you know, just in terms of like the filmmaking team and how we presented it, which was that we were going to be telling the full story and that we were going to hold back. But at the same time, like we are, you know, we are going to be thoughtful. Um, and in terms of how we're playing, this is not a hit piece. This is not a gotcha. This is a really investigative um, 360, you know, look at uh, what this all means. And you achieved that. How long did it take you to convince her? That might be more Olivia question. I don't know. Do you remember exactly how long? I mean, the conversations went on. It was, you know, for for a little bit. It wasn't extraordinary long. I mean, we had her early um, in the production, but you know, there were several conversations that that took place. Yeah, I honestly can't remember an exact time frame. It, 
I know that like, and like Bly said, like this is, you know, it was a big deal for her to sit down. And as you can imagine, like for any of our survivors in this piece, like sitting down, telling your story is an incredibly brave um, thing to do. So yeah, it took a little bit more time, care and conversation. But I think ultimately, like, we're just super grateful that she sat down with us. And and she is amazing it, it, throughout this in, in also how beautifully you two uh, also tell her story and the way it unravels. Um, so what I found out, which I didn't know any of this, I only knew the Duggars from TV and the reality show and all the jokes that my mom made, all the jokes I've written about the size of the uterus and that things just don't fall out and whatever. Um, but I did not know they adhered to the teachings of an organization. I just want to make this, get this correct. Institute in Basic Life Principles, which is led by a man, is it Gothard? Gothard, yeah. Gothard. And on the surface, the group, you know, promotes living a conservative, pure and godly life in the name of Christianity. But it, to me, came off much more like a cult. I felt like it was at the intersection of like the Warren Jeffs, FDLS, and Scientology kind of slammed together. Um, Can you explain a bit how they started and how they operate? Yeah. So Bill Gothard kind of came to prominence in, um, you know, the 60s and 70s, um, going around doing these local workshops and seminars. um, And they quickly became super, super popular um, at one point, packing out stadiums full of people. Um, And as one of our subjects points out, like he was kind of a rock star in terms of, you know, Christian uh, Christian speakers uh, at this point in time. Um, And I think that really has to do with the sort of social and cultural upheaval that was happening at the time. Um, A lot of people are wondering, you know, what is the right way to be a Christian? Um, You have the sex, drugs, and rock and roll movement going on. Um, So everyone's really just trying to figure out, um, you know, really how to get their kids under authority. And then Bill Gothard walks in and he has, you know, all the answers, so to speak, for that. Um, And his teachings really boil down to this umbrella of authority structure. So you have the father um, at the top of this structure, and then the women and children underneath. Um, really, it, it it plays out in you know the dad having ultimate control over the family, um, which of course, as we find out in the show, just um, creates a, a real system of abuse. What I found is people always ask why you know, including me, like why they have so many children, and through this, you find out that the central tenant of the IBLP is one of them is to have as many kids as possible to create. And this chilled me what they call the Joshua generation, which is sort of breeding this younger group uh, of citizens, for lack of a better word, to infiltrate politics and leadership and the arts. And the whole point of it is to send them out there and promote their conservative beliefs you know, and, and some of their beliefs are little things like, you know, keep the woman pregnant and in the kitchen and barefoot, you know, little stuff. Yeah. Minor things like that, but that's exactly yeah. right. I mean, they were, they were, they were, you know, raising up an army for God. And, and that is in the, you know, you do that by, um, you know, by sheer populate, you know, then the population numbers, putting more like people out there in the world that you can teach up in within the, you know, belief system, and, you know, it is a very concerted, planned effort and with a very long goal. So Jill does say that TLC and Discovery, the producers in the network of so many Duggar shows, knew this was a coded uh, platform for Joe Bob and Michelle and the IBLP to recruit new followers. Was she right? Did the network really know how involved they were with the IBLP or really what they stood for? You know, I think that this is, I will say that we certainly did not send out to do, um, you know, take down of TLC. And I don't think that that it comes across. No. It, it, it really is a question. It's hard to know. I mean, we reached out to uh, a number of people who work on the production uh, or the productions, I should say, and they declined to speak. So it's hard to know like what they knew when. And, but I think, 
So it's not necessarily that, you know, again, like this is not an indictment of them per se, but it is like a question for all of us, whether you're, you know, creating media, whether you're consuming media, you know, maybe to look a little more closely under the hood, you know, if things feel a little bit off or a little bit different, like, okay, well, what exactly, you know, where is the responsibility? You know, where, where does that lie? And I think that's something that we would like people to start thinking about and having a conversation around too. Is the old, what did they know and when did they know it? Yeah. And we don't know the answer to that. Yeah. One of the things that they teach, and, and this is a big point with the Duggars, is they have this curriculum, which is put out by the A-B-I-L-B-P. -A -B -B I don't know why it's so hard for me to get those letter letters correct. I-B-L-P, encouraging homeschooling, and they even gave you or they give you the curriculum, which is basically a joke of a curriculum. And they are sending people out into the world completely uneducated. Is that just a form of control in building this Joshua generation and just getting everyone to march in line? Or is it that they really don't want people educated, especially the women? I mean, there's that moment where uh, two former members who are now married recount this fascinating story when the guy asked his, his then girlfriend about the math she learned during homeschooling. She tells him that girls only learned fractions because they needed them to know how to cook and bake. I'm finding a disconnect and we're supposed to be putting out this Joshua generation, but yet everyone is supremely uneducated. Is that just a form of sort of how they control the family? Because it sure seems like that's how Michelle and Jim did. I mean, it really is a control of family. And if you think about it too, it's really to control the women, right? For, for right. the most part. And it's like the women are never the ones that are supposed to be going out there into, you know, for it, it certainly within like the, uh, with the IBLP and, and not speaking more broadly about, you know, the conservative, like, you know, Christian movement, but, but it is very much like the women are not supposed to be out there in the halls of Congress. Like the women are going to be at home having babies, cooking, cleaning and all that. So, and doing you know, fractions and, do, yeah, and doing fractions <laughs> with baking cups. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it really is remarkable and it's infuriating, especially obviously it's like female filmmakers. Yeah. Or just women in general. Yeah. Hey, Olivia, that had to have been really strange out in the field, knowing what you know and how if a woman dresses what they consider provocatively, you're sort of saying, well, whatever happens to you, you deserve. Um, was it weird being in that environment and filming and let's just say you're wearing a sleeveless T-shirt? Were you, did you feel like I needed to cover up or in that sort of way to be, um, mental, more mentally aware, more consciously aware of the world that you were living in. Yeah, it was interesting. And obviously throughout this whole process, I, I don't even know how many, I've maybe read almost all the wisdom booklets at this point, unfortunately, or fortunately for the show, I suppose. But um, yeah, I mean, what I'm wearing right now would be considered what they call an eye trap, um, which is anything that draws attention to anything that's not, you know, your countenance, your face. Um, it, it was it was horrifying and it was fascinating learning about, you know, the modesty standards and then also seeing how that so clearly was playing out on the show. Um, and then again, that begs the question, it's like, you know, what were we watching and sort of like our complicity in watching this show without asking um, those those greater questions? It had to be. I and mean, what's in those booklets? You, you're like, you've read, them. I haven't read them. I am dying to know because I only got the glimpses of what's in the documentary, which is you have to pick like a multiple choice, which outfit is not, is not the, was it eye trap? You know, I only saw that part of it. Is there any real education in the sense that we, that we use the term education, punctuation, grammar, math, history, is anything of that, ilk in those those books the whole curriculum is it's not education <laughs> not <laughs> in the slightest not in the slightest yeah yeah and i think too you know we talk about a lot of different kinds of abuses in the show and something that we really wanted to highlight was just the the sheer educational neglect that these kids had to go through um and how that can be really debilitating later in life when you're trying to kind of pull yourself out of it it is one step away from the women don't need to know how to read it really is. And that is so frightening that that goes on in in normal everyday society, that that is considered an option. 
which as being educated, ambitious, and successful women, there had to be times where you stepped back and went, this is the freaking twilight zone. It is. I mean, it's, it's crazy that we can live in, you know, the United States in 2023 and that this kind of education, you know, can can take place and there's no oversight. I mean, that, that's a whole other conversation, right? Like we don't even get into that in in our docuseries, but like what, where, who, who's monitoring and, and, you know, these, this homeschooling, you know, these homeschooling programs, like if your children are not in public school or, or in the school system, you know, what kind of education you're receiving and should there be standards? Should there be universal standards? Should there be, you know, is it up to each state? Is should there be a federal standard? Like, and who, again, like so many questions raised by that, but it's really, I mean, it's sad how, how these kids just fell through the cracks and there was no one there to look out for them or catch them. And you brought up the lack of complete and total, any kind of education and any kind of oversight, which leads me to one of the bigger Duggar questions, which is, because they did not let the outside world in pretty much at all, again, very sort of Warren Jeffs like, do you think that's why the girls didn't really think that the molestation from their brother was that bad? Unfortunately, the teachings in this group, well, well number one, you have a you have a bunch of families that are incredibly isolated. So that in itself is is an issue. Um and, you know, we go into the the te- just the the teachings of how to counsel sexual abuse. Um, we go into the show and the the victim blaming blaming the horrific bl- victim blaming that goes on with that. Um, if that is the kind of information and in any case with any of, you know, some of these survivors that they're being fed, you know, it then it, it kind of puts you into a shame spiral, I would imagine. Um, ex- OK, so just for people who don't know the story is now as deeply as I do. I need you to explain the timeline of the Duggars, how they became, how they came to prominence and how the, the sexual misconducts of Josh had already been at play and technically dealt with before even the first article in parents magazine. That is what sparked TLC's interest. So walk me, if you could walk us through sort of the timeline of what happened when and how. Yeah. So, you know, the Duggars had a special on Discovery Health, which I believe was 2004. Um, And there, as we go into in the show, um, you know, Josh was was acting out uh, inappropriately uh, towards his siblings um, during a period of time. And then um, there was uh, later on a parents magazine interview um, that drew the attention of uh, TLC, um, which ended up giving them their um, reality show, which was, I believe, 2008, um, which was 17 kids and counting at the time. And then, of course, as the more kids, the name changed. Um, so that's kind of the the general timeline. And Josh had already been, he had already technically confessed to his family and to sort of this random state trooper who it turned out was a friend of the family. So kind of nothing happened and they sort of sent him out to their version of outward bound to go be rehabbed. But yet nobody found, found out about it through the parents magazine. I mean, all this predated 17 kids and counting. How could this have not, how could they have kept this buried so well? You know, is the ultimate control that is exhibited not only in the organization, the IBLP, but within the family. And the, the, the father has just unfettered, total ab- authoritarian control over the wife and the kids. And, you know, he was able to use that um, as a, you know, as a tool to keep everybody quiet. And, you know, and then also to like, you know, the kids, like they don't have any, you know, percept or, or, or perspective in terms of what's appropriate, what's not, what their recourse is, you know, they have no idea. So if your father, you know, is telling you that you better keep a lid on it um, and they're going to sweep it under the rug and never talk about it again, well, that's what you do. So, yeah. But, and they- well, what I found fascinating is there was actually a police report and nobody at either of these places did enough due diligence to find out that there might be everything isn't what it seems to be. That's what I find because we've seen it happen on a lot of shows 
where suddenly something comes up and the network is rolling it all back. And the fact that they were able to bury that, it, it, it gives me pause, obviously, about the community because obviously their community is deeply entrenched in, the, in this world. And it, the molestation is rampant. The sexual misconduct is rampant in the IBLP. Was it? I've got it written down. 30-something charges or allegations against Gothard. I, I just, it is so hard to get your mind around that. Yeah, it's truly, it's truly a, a, a culture of abuse. Um, and yeah, I think that's one of the things, you know, the, the more research you do, the deeper dive you do into this whole world, it's, it's really horrifying um, because you see the same story play out over and over and over again in so many different families and all of them were rather isolated from each other. So it's, yeah, it's pretty scary. At what point, because the documentary, the access you have, and it's remarkable what that you let all the people involved do the talking. You really don't insert your own narrative. You let the story be pushed through strictly through interviews. Um, at what point during the process, was it the writing, the predict, production, the editing, did you realize, A, how fucked up this was? Was it more than you realized it was going to be? And what was the holy shit moment? Do I take that, Olivia? <laughs> yeah, I mean, going into it and reading all of these survivor stories. I mean, here's the other thing. I mean, the Duggar, you know, family had their TV show. But like back in, I believe it was 2011, you know, this whole survivor uh, support group uh, comes online called Recovering Grace. And, you know, victims of Bill Gothard are sharing their stories there. Um, and other people as well of just growing up in uh, in, a, in a cult um, and speaking out. So this was all out there. Um, so I think to answer your first question, just kind of like understanding up front how messed up this all was and why aren't these survivors being heard was really the motivator, again, to to make the show. Um, and in terms of the, you know, the, that kind of holy shit moment, I think of just how far and wide the ideology was spreading. Um, so into the military system, into the police, into, you know, uh, uh, public school system and internationally um, was was really, really like a wow moment um, for me. Yeah, that is. It's, it, it, it's one of those sort of chilling moments. One of the things that also struck me was when Jill Duggar Ask the network to pay their out-of-pocket expenses when she had her baby to the hospital that they got all the footage. And we've come to find out that dad has all the money. How much money do you think they made off the show or that 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 Jim Bob made off the show? I mean, we won't, I, it's, you know, we don't want to put a specific number to it. Um, but that being said, it's millions. Um, and it, I would say that is one of the other things about this show is that Jill really comes clean about the, you know, her, the, the labor situation. And that is pretty shocking and labor, not by, I mean, yes, labor for delivery, but also labor yes. as in like the work that she and other, the other kids and the members of the family put in by being a part of the show and, and how they were not remunerated for that work. Um, it's, that is a, I think a big reveal, um, you know, and the details behind that. And I think people will find pretty, pretty shocking. I mean, Jill and the husband seem pretty on it. How come no one's gotten a lawyer? How comes no one's saying, you know what, we're going to go after when you find out that they signed things that is as minors um, that they weren't supposed to sign or that things were supposed to be renegotiated once they became adults and they weren't. And I understand when the, when Jill backs off, when she, when her dad said my agent has to be on the phone, which is to anyone in the entertainment business, hilarious in a weird, sick, twisted kind of way. And that he had set up a production company that was holding all the money. Why haven't they, why hasn't she or the brothers or anyone else who's kind of gotten away, uh, hired an attorney? You know, it's hard to speculate. And by the way, it's family, right? So there's the whole family element. I, I don't know, suing your own family. Do you go there? Is it worth it? 
I mean, an interesting thing to note, though, is that Derek, Jill's husband, is an attorney. Um, and uh, really, yes, he is. He is a train. And, and so he just didn't make it into the documentary, but he is. And so, you know, I, I, I think it's just a personal decision that, you know, for each one of them to make that calculation. Like, you know, do you take on your family? Do you take on a network? Like, what do you do? Yeah. And is it worth it? And is it worth it? Um, where are, I mean, we know where Josh is. And again, the fact the wife has stayed with them because that is what God has wanted her to do. Where are the different kids now we know we see where jill is um and the rest of them and uh, and josh well we know where he is because you know he's in the he's in the big house um where is everyone they seem to have just evaporated you know there are there are a lot of them that are still you know i can't speak for (laughs) for every single family member of course and there's a lot of them um But I think, you know, a number of them are still in the teachings. Um, And there was another daughter recently um, who spoke out about against Bill Gothard, um, which we were, of course, really um, excited to see. But no one. Ginger, sorry, Ginger just came out with her book, too. And she's in, I believe, Ginger's in Los Angeles. And she's been speaking out, you know, very, um, you know, openly um, uh, against the IBLP. I think they also, which I loved, is you included the cousin. It was like the outsiders insider through it how come i would have just thought that there would have been more frustration and anger from jim bob's sister and from the couple that are their very good friends till you find out they have 11 children but that they those two groups didn't see that this was actual abuse happening I think that it's supposed to show you the absolute control, you know, that each of these fathers has over their families. And then also too, just the, when you grow up in this culture and you have, especially as a girl, um, is your ch- children in general. And then if you're a girl, the idea that you have any agency doesn't exist. So if something weird is happening to you, but like you're, you have no, you don't even know, by the way, if it's, even if it's weird, you don't know that it's weird or wrong. Maybe your gut tells you that, but no one's ever told you that. And then second of all, like, what are you going to do? Like, who are you going to go to? Like, if you're going to, you know, call out your brother, you know, your brother's above you in the pecking order. Um, if it's something your, your dad is doing, who are you going to go to? The church? The church is going to put that father, like, right back in power. It's just, so what do you, I mean, it's just, it, again, like that absolute stranglehold that each one of these, like, fathers had over their families it's you start to understand how nobody nobody knew you know and um and the other thing is to me obviously is that sexuality is such a um you know a taboo subject and it's so it's dealt with in a really um you know unnatural way and so people behave you know you know inappropriately in that sort of situation and it's and it's again it's and the whole idea of it the shame around it no one talks about it so even if this inappropriate stuff is going on certainly no one's going to talk to you you know the outside world about it. One of the things, again, we, you know, I work in reality TV. You guys work in reality TV. We all work in reality TV. It doesn't always end well for people. Not everybody becomes a Kardashian. Um, Josh Duggar's in jail. Todd Chrisley's in jail. Jen Shaw, who's a real housewife, is in jail. Another housewife, Sonia Morgan, is bankrupt. The situation from the Jersey Shore evaded his taxes. And that's before we even get into Randall Gate and Scandaval. Why do you think reality TV brings out the absolute worst in so many people? Even people who aren't Hollywood types. Well, I, it's an interesting question, by the way. No one's asked that um, before. So it's a really thoughtful I can sh- I can share um, with you the list of everybody that's in jail. I got no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I know the list is long. You know, it's hard to know. Like, okay, you extrapolate out. I don't know. I don't know the numbers. You extrapolate out the number of people who have been on reality show and who've ended up in jail or broke and like compare that against like the, the, the general population. I don't know how that's used. Certainly it does seem like there's, you know, a number of people who have had, um, you know, unfortunate sort of like endings, if you will, or circumstances that have come after their their shows. You know, I sometimes I think that shows are looking for the extremes, right? And oftentimes around the extremes, there are there are other things at play and there, there's you know reasons that people behave extremely live extremely um whatever and and you know unpacking that sometimes is complicated and so i think you know and whether there's you know and certainly seeking attention there are 
psychologically or financially, whatever it is, the reasons for doing that um, oftentimes have darker underpinnings, I would say. Olivia, was there any time out in the field that you felt unsafe? Because I know a lot of people with Scientology and a lot of the, the documentaries that have been done about Scientology, people have very, and, and with with F, with the deep form, fundamentalist Mormons, people have literally felt unsafe. They have been followed. They have been uh, not terrorized, but harassed. And did you find that at all out in the field? You no, know, I didn't, you know, because for the most part, we were, you know, interviewing and talking with um, folks who were kind of on the other side of all of this um, for the most part. So, um, yeah, I never I never really felt that, you know, who's <laughs> to say when the show comes out, maybe I'll feel a little bit of that paranoia. But, um, yeah, I think and also our production environment um, was also felt very safe and supportive and, and all those things. So, yeah. Um, No, I never felt like I had to kind of like look over my shoulder or anything like that. Again, the power, when you harness the power of a television network and the power of a cult and marry them together and put them on the same page, where does our entertainment system or our media fall short in doing? You know, I mean, you could call the Duggars the best deep fake, for lack of a better term, in reality television. Um, You know, next thing you're going to tell me the Chrisleys aren't really Southern. I mean, I I don't think I can have that shattered. Um, (laughs) Below Deck really isn't on a boat. That would just, like, that would level me. Um, Where does, because I, and I have very strong opinions about this, where, and I know we touched on it earlier, where does the responsibility of true due diligence lay, lie. Because we've seen blowups on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and all these people going to jail and people, and I'm, I'm taking out all the Vanderpump stuff because that's just yucky people acting poorly. Um, but we really find out horrible things about their past after they've been held up to be heroes or stars by very powerful entertainment conglomerates. Why, where, where's the disconnect? Why have they not learned that you need to really, really vet people? Yeah. You know, it's hard. We could, I mean, we absolutely agree. And there's gotta be some standard, right? There's gotta be some, you know, there has to be some process by which to avoid um, promulgating, you know, perfect shiny pictures or what, or putting people on who are abusers, who are whether it's you know sexual, emotional, financial, whatever it may be, um, physical. And I don't know. I think we don't know. You know, the vetting process that TLC went through again. Like we reached out to many, 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 many people who who worked on the shows, and just nobody was willing to go on the record and, and speak with us. So it's hard to know like what the process really was and in, in, in looking and or what they use for for other shows. And again, it's not just TLC, but it's like every show, I think. And that's what you're that's what you're getting at as well. Yeah. It does seem to be like, you know, how if you've done like a basic background check, if you've done a basic, you know, s- scan of like, you know, police and court records, would that would that have come up? I mean, hard to know. I mean, obviously it varies by state to state. And like, I mean, you would think Josh, that, yeah. you would think Josh Duggar's police report would come out. You think now, you know, that of course, like every state, you know, the databases are all, you know, kind of screw, so are screwier than others and harder to find things. And, you know, and obviously it gets better and better with time, like in terms of the ease with which to find, you know, information. So it's hard to know um, kind of where things fell apart, but clearly they did. And and it does, I think hopefully this, you know, engenders a conversation for people to start taking a closer look at having a conversation about, okay, if we're going to do these shows. Is there some standard? Is there like, and what are they? And you know, how do we how do we address that? And I think the other thing is, as viewers too, um, you know, I don't know if if you know how com- are we complicit in like supporting it? Are we not? Whose responsibility is it? Um, if things feel a little off and a little weird, and we just ignore it and just keep dialing in and buying the magazines and tuning in, I don't know. Is that on us at all? Hard to know. I feel. I think I just see a college course, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> They can do a college course on Taylor Swift. They can do a course on this. What do you guys hope someone, and individually, someone, uh, what people take away from this? 
Yeah, I think I think two things. One kind of going off the whole reality TV conversation is there there really isn't a lot of like rules and regulations with regards to children on reality television. Um, you know, the, to my knowledge, there are no studio teachers there, you know, uh, you know, Ooh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, there's I think there's a larger conversation um, that certainly needs to happen there um, in the interest of protecting children. Um, and I think secondly, you know, we have we have had a lot of survivors, you know, bravely speak out in this series. Um, and I think one of the main things that that they're getting at and we hope other people realize is that, you know, if you are trying to get out of a group like this, that you're not alone, it might feel that way in the moment, but there is really a community out there that that will catch you. Why do you agree or what else do you hope? A hundred percent agree. And I think that I just hope that people continue to look at any organization, religious, secular, otherwise, um, you know, any in, whether it's an institution, group, whatever, whenever there's like a, a really centralized power. And unfortunately, usually when it's a, you know, a patriarchal male centralized power and there's secrecy around it, you know, take a really hard look at what's really going on there because there's probably a lot more to the story. Shiny, happy people. Duggar Family Secrets, which premieres on Prime Video on June 2nd. I already told a friend of mine who is going to be traveling on that weekend to make sure that they can have their uh, Amazon Prime app ready to go because it is not just, it's literally a can't miss. You, people have to see it. And ladies, thank you so much for taking the time. It was everything you want a documentary to be. So I don't know much more praise I can give that than that. We will, I'd take that and, and then some. Thank you. We really appreciate Thank it. You so Thank you so much.